need encouragement to simply do it and go for it. And you have shown it to the world. So that is really, for me, the most important thing. And in that context, the first question, you used to work in New York as an investment banker. So an investment banker is actually the exact opposite of an <laughs> entrepreneur. He is delegating risks to other people. And basically, uh, how did you find out? Or how did you think that you should move from you know, investment I, banking to really launch a company? Uh, um, I think I'd always wanted to, to do it, even since I was a kid. Um, had the idea, one of the people who every time I look at something, it looks like it could be improved. You know, there's something wrong with it. So I go through like, wow, how could this restaurant be better? How could, and you know, and so I've always had that kind of idea. Um, the great thing about uh, humans in general is we're always improving things. And so entrepreneurs um, uh, and inventors, uh, and you know, if they follow their curiosity and they follow their passions and they figure something out and then they figure out how to make it better and they're never satisfied. Uh, and, and you need to harness that. In my view, you need to harness that energy uh, primarily on your customers instead of on your competitors. And so where I see, I sometimes see companies and even young s small startup companies, entrepreneurs go awry, is they start to pay more attention to their competition than they do to their customers. And I think that that um, I think that in big mature industries, that can be that might be a, a winning approach in some cases. Kind of close following, let other people be the pioneers, and you know, uh, and, and go down the blind alleys. That there's many things that, that that a new inventive company tries won't work, um, and so those mistakes and errors and failures do cost real money. Um, and, and, and so maybe in a mature industry where growth rates are slow and change is very slow. But as you see in the world more and more, there aren't very many mature industries. Change is happening everywhere. You know, we see it in the automobile industry with self-driving cars. And, but you could go right down the line of every industry and you would see it. But where, do you have any idea where, where your ambition really uh, comes from? What, what was driving you? Um, I, I really don't know, uh, you know, my, I've been passionate about certain things uh, forever. Um, and I fell in love with computers in fourth grade. I got very lucky. Um, my elementary school had a teletype that got connected to a mainframe computer that some business in downtown Houston donated a little bit of computer time to. This is, you, you can picture these teletypes. They had the punch tape and they had a 300 baud modem. You would dial up the phone and put it in the cradle. And so we had some time sharing on that mainframe computer. And none of the teachers knew how to use it. So me and two other kids stayed after school and sort of figured out how to do it and figured out and kind of taught ourselves programming from books. I think one thing that is, um, it, I got very lucky early in my childhood. Look, we all get um, gifts. Uh, we get certain things in our life that are um, uh, that we're very lucky about and one of the most powerful one is who your early role models are you know you could, they could it be your was parents. your grand grandfather it was yeah. in a big sense my, my mom and dad but my mm. grandfather too and you know I had my mom had me when she was uh, 17 years old and she was still in high school in Albuquerque New Mexico and this is in 1964 I can assure you that being a pregnant uh, teenager in high school was not cool in Albuquerque, New Mexico at that time. And uh, so, uh, it's, in, in, so it was a very, it was difficult for her. My grandfather went to bat for her when they tried to kick her out of school. And you know, he, they're, they're incredible. I had, to, so the gift I had is I had this incredible family. Could you describe and, a little bit the role of your grandfather? Because sure. Sean has mentioned it. I think it was yeah, really important he, for it you. It was super important for me. And um, I spent an unusual amount of time with my uh, grandparents, and especially with my grandfather on the ranch. So he had a ranch in South Texas. And I would spend my summers there from age 4 to 16. And they, when I was 4, they were taking me for the summer to kind of give my parents a break. He, he created the illusion for me when I was 4 years old that I was helping him on the ranch, which of course could not have been true. <laughs> but I believed it. And, um, and then as, by the time I was 16, of course, I was actually helping on the ranch. I, you know, I, could, I can fix prolapsed cattle. I can, you know, we did all of our own veterinary work. Some of the cattle even survived. 
Um, <laughs> and uh, we fixed windmills and laid you know, water pipelines and built fences and barns and fixed, that, fixed the bulldozer that you guys talked about. And so one of the things that's so interesting about that lifestyle and about my grandfather is he did everything himself. You know, he didn't call a vet if one of the animals was sick. He figured out what to do himself. 